Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we will configure mail enable for outbound mail. First we will describe and work with the relay permission. Then we will see various outbound SMTP settings. And finally we will configure mail enable as the smart host to send mail through the send grid. So let's start the configuration. So what is a relay? Relay means allowing clients to send mail outside. These are non-local mail or mail for other domain. There are various ways to permit the clients for relay. Here on the relay tab it says users only need to match one of the settings below in order to be able to relay mail through this mail server. So there are a couple of ways to allow clients to relay mail through this server. First one is called the SMTP authentication or allow relay for authenticated senders. If you click the authentication method we have three ways to authenticate clients. On the first option, mail enable integrated authentication. The username and password at Outlook will be checked against the username and password we provide during the mailbox creation. And on the second option, this is called the Windows authentication. If the system is integrated with the Windows, then the username and password from the client will be checked against the Windows authentication. And if you set any default username and password, on the server then client must be configured according to the username and password we mentioned here so if you check the default mail email integrated authentication let's go to the pc1 on pc1 user1 is configured and if you see the mail setting we can see that our smtp authentication is enabled my outgoing server require authentication and use the same settings as my incoming mail server so this username and password will be checked against the username and password we provided during the mailbox creation for the user one so if user one wants to send mail to anthony at optimus server must allow relay permission to user one otherwise it cannot send mail to optimus okay let's send now check from the Anthony at optimus.com's outlook. Here you can see that mail from user one received. So the relay permission is working. Now from the server, if we change the relay permission, let's say we give a default username test and password test one two three. If we apply, we need to restart the SMTP service. Now if user one wants to send mail again. Test two, test two, send. Users one outlook is complaining. It cannot send mail because the authentication is failed and the username and password prompt pop-ups. If we put the default username and password we set on the server, now it should allow the user to send mail. Now the mail gone. If we check from the Optimus, it should receive test 2 mail so from user 1 test 2 mail received so we can see that how SMTP authentication is working so we set back to the original on the second option we have allow relay for privileged IP range this is not a good idea because we cannot allow a whole subnet if any PC got infected on the subnet that PC also will get the permission to relay mail through the server so in that case that PC could spread spam by using our server if we allow the whole subnet by specifying the IP range our server could blacklist at any time so here by default all computers will be denied and the local loopback IP or the server IP is only accepted here so this is the best option we can leave it like this and on the third option allow relay for local sender address Users who specify their from address to be an email address on the server can relay. No other authentication is done. So this will open your server to spammer. So this is not a good idea because any spammer can add a from address with our valid user. So this is not a good idea. And the last option pop before SMTP authentication. This is actually old technique. So before authenticating the client for the SMTP relay, it checks the username and password against the pop server then if the user can uh, successfully log into the pop server then it allows for the smtp relay so we are not using this one because this is the uh, old technique actually 
so these are our relay permissions and we have tested the relay permissions so default option is based so we are not changing anything here let's see the outbound setting maximum number of send thread these are the maximum threads the server will use during the mail sending timeout for mail servers this is how long the SMTP service will wait for a response from a remote mail server before it disconnects with the server and outbound queue poll interval this is how often the SMTP service polls the outgoing queue directory for mail messages to send so it will pull mail to send outbound every second limit outbound message size this setting forces mail enable to check the size of the each message before delivering it to remote mail server if the message size is larger than the size then the message cannot be delivered and it will be returned to the sender outbound ip binding you can bind the outbound smtp service to a particular ip address configured on the server so if we have multiple ip address then we can choose which ip it should use during the sending mail so we have only one ip so we are leaving it like this default outbound tls send using tls if remote server supports it normally during smtp communication we don't need to enable this one because most of the smtp server does not require tls to receive mail from another mail server as we will use this server as a smart host this option can be mandatory if the remote server enforces to use the tls for outbound connection then we need to select this and finally log if failed recipient exits 20 mail per hour this option logs to the smtp debug log if failed recipients exceeds 20 mail per hour so these are the settings on the outbound connection now let's configure the smart host to enable smart host we need to check the smart host enabled so here it says the all outbound mail will be sent to the following smtp server when smart hosting is enabled so you can ask what is a smart host actually a smart host receives mail from the client and sends the mail to some other mail server to send on behalf of the server smart host never communicates with the recipient server it delivers mail to another server for final delivery. Here, when a client sends an outbound mail, mail enable will receive the mail and forward it to the remote send grid server to send mail to the recipient. Here, I have logged into my send grid account. So during a send grid account creation, we have a username and password. We need to configure the username and password on the mail enable. So let's configure IP domain smtp.sendgrid.net. Port will be 587 and the remote server requires authentication click apply we need to restart the smtp server here we have an option domain smart host takes priority we can configure smart host from the post office here we can set this smart host and if we configure like this post office smart host configuration will take the priority uh, over the SMTP uh, smart host configuration so we are not configuring on the post office we are configuring on the SMTP wise so now if we open the log the activity we can see on the log so let's send a mail from the client so the mail gone now if we check from the Gmail Here you can see that our mail came from the user one. If we check the header, you can see that the mail came from the send grid encryption and it is from the send grid. Now, if we see the activity log, so mail from user one at the mail server group.com, sender address accepted, and the recipient is gmail.com and it's communicating through the send grid for the test mail too if you want to see the detail log we can go to the debug log and it says the smtp server is forwarding all mail directly to the smtp host so it's using the send grid and send grid allows the connection and we receive the mail from the gmail so our smtp smart host testing is okay we have successfully configured the smart host as well so this is it for today thank you for being with me if you still didn't subscribe to my channel, please subscribe. It will encourage me to create more helpful videos like this. So thank you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.